All your bass Chris. Hello, all your bass Chris here, or his hands at least. In this video, I'm going to build a Mr. A full stack with case. This video was sponsored by MrFPGA.co.uk and the intent of this video is to show you how to use the parts that they sell to create your very own fully kitted out Mr. I am slightly biased because uh, I purchased all my bits from MrFPGA.co.uk. Before they asked me to do this video, I was a customer and a very satisfied one at that. So take of that what you will, but I would recommend them uh, if, as a supplier, especially if you're in Europe or in the UK. But of course they do ship internationally so you can get your bits from anywhere. Uh, so link in the description. So if you want to build your own Mr. like this, the, the parts I've got here are all freely available from MrFPGA.co.uk and the analog board and the cases were provided for the purpose of this video. Anyway, enjoy and I'll see you shortly. So, first things first, let's familiarise ourselves with the parts. I'm assuming that you've come here without knowing what anything is, so we'll go through the bits now. This is the DE10 Nano by Terasic. A lovely bit of kit, and we already have a memory expansion, again, from MrFPGA.co.uk, inserted in here. That's a very simple process. It literally slides on the pins, and it has to be facing that way. We also have put a little heat sink on, just to keep things a little bit cooler. Here we have the USB hub board. This sits at the bottom of the stack and you use this to connect all your peripherals such as USB mice, USB drives, joysticks and whatnot. Also with the USB hub you get this little doodad here and the idea of this is you use this to connect the USB hub to the main Mr. Board. So let's get started. We're not going to be using this for now, we'll put that aside. And we're not going to be using the D10 Nano for a moment because we're going to prepare our board for connection. To make your life a little bit easier, you'll need to use the four little spacers that are included in your package here. And then you need four of the slightly bigger spacers. We're simply going to take our big spacers and feed them through the screw holes on the board. And then we're going to screw them like so. Not too tight. Just enough so you get a nice bite. Screwing them in. You can use your fingers for this. Be careful not to cross thread. By the way, if you are looking for different parts of the video, there will be timestamps below so you can jump to the part that you really, really need. Whoops. Curse these fat fingers of mine. There we go. The reason for me doing this will become apparent in a moment. This is going to save you a lot of heartache later on when you uh, come to put your bits together. So, as you can see now, we've got the USB hub set like a little card table. I'm gonna put it down flat. Do you remember this bit? This is what we use to connect the actual D10 nano board to the, the USB hub. Take your USB hub, uh, sorry, your D10 nano board here. We're looking for this slot here. Oh, sorry, other side. We are looking for this slot here, the micro USB. And as you'll see, this little thing slides neatly into that slot like that. Now on the bottom of the DE10 Nano board, now we've got, we now have a little uh, four pin socket. That corresponds with the four pins that sit upright from your USB hub, just here. Okay. Now the idea is you literally just line up the two things, push them together ever so gently. You don't want to rush this. And that is the hub connected to the DET Nano. We'll put that down for now. Now while it's laying flat like this, I'm gonna take the opportunity to screw in some another set of the longer risers into the top of the board. These aren't the super, super long ones, but these will be included in your package. So you wanna make sure these all line up nicely. 
and then you go ahead and you screw them in. Okay, so now that's done. As you can see, we have our spacers screwed in. Again, not too tight. You don't want to flex the boards if you can help it, but just enough to stop anything popping out unexpectedly. Yeah, isn't that nice? Okay, so you've assembled your Mr. So far, you've put your USB hub on. So in this case, we're now going to install the analog I.O. board onto your Mr. So obviously it comes beautifully packaged from mrfpga.co.uk who have kindly provided this board for this video. Now, before I continue, obviously handle this with care, but put it safely aside for now. Before I continue, you will notice on the DET Nano that we have this row of jumpers. Now, this board is conf uh, currently configured, <laughs> configured for the digital I.O. board. To make it work with the analog, take that down, okay? Make sure that they're all the same, okay? So, first of all, place your Nano, well, your DT Nano, the Mister, on a flat surface, because you're gonna need some space to work. And now you need to be careful with this bit because these pins are delicate and they need, you need to make sure they line up nicely. I'll show you very briefly as well. What you can't see, or you might be able to, is behind this memory module we have a line of female pins, uh, sockets rather, for the pins to go into. You're aiming for those with one side and you're aiming for these ones for the other side. The board will only go on one way, do not force it the other way, otherwise, you know, I don't know, the world will end. But it should be fairly obvious which way it goes on because the memory sits slightly proud of the rest of the board. So this is slightly tricky. Go, a, go very slow when you do this. Make sure everything lines up nicely and is happy. Right, that looks like it's lined up to me. All of the pins are situated nicely. And now a little bit of gentle pressure. The two bits should come together. Don't forget to put pressure evenly on both sides. You don't want to bend any of these pins if you can help it. And gentle, gentle. And there we go. Whoops, press the button. <laughs> it's all right, it doesn't matter. Okay, again, go around, make sure all the connections are good. A good indicator of whether you bent the pins is to have a good look at them, eyeball them and see if anything's loose and goosey. And I'm going to say that that's okay. Oh, that rhymed, I didn't realise. So uh, a little step to save you a bit more heartache in a moment is get the risers you've got. I'm assuming you've got these, haven't you? Yeah, you'll have these. And the reason I'll have these is because they're included in the beautiful cases that F, uh, Mr. FPGA.co.uk sell. So I'm going to get these risers and I'm going to secure the, uh, the I.O. board, the analog I.O. board, to the rest of the D10 Nano. So there you go. A fully configured Mr. Stack with the analog I.O. board, so you can VGA it up as much as you want. Nice audio out, digital I.O. port for the MT32 Pi uh, or other things. Uh, obviously, MT32 Pi, fantastic bit of kit. I've got I've done a video about that. And you can also buy them from mrfpga.co.uk, who, if you didn't already know, are uh, sponsoring this video. Ha, right, anyway, okay. So, uh, we've got this beautiful thing now, we want to keep it nice, so it just so happens that over here, off camera, as is by magic, I have a case for the Nano. So, let's get this prepared, oh, 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 sticky sticky, there we go, right. So, this is your bottom plate, okay, 
Uh, you can tell it's the bottom plate because it actually has MrFPGA.co.uk written on it at this point. Although it doesn't really matter which side you put this on as it's completely interchangeable. But for completeness sake, I'd like it to look nice. I've already stuck the feet on. You get these in the package, just little sticky feet, and you give them a good old stick on and uh, it stops your mister from scratching up any table you put it on. See, they think of everything. Okay, let's flip this upside down. Reverse it. And we're going to start at the bottom. And we're going to make sure that the plate is all nicely lined up and drop it on there. Now, next step is to give it a little bit of a screwing with a screwdriver, preferably a small one. You don't want to be using an electric screwdriver with these as there's a very good chance you'll crack the acrylic. I mean, you can do what you want. It's yours, but uh, I would advise against it as you don't want to over tighten these screws too much simply because you'll crack the case and it just won't look nice. And we all want it to look nice, don't we? So four screws in the bottom. Again, some people are mechanically brilliant with this sort of thing and they look amazing when they do it. Me, I just look like some fat lad uh, dropping screws everywhere, which, you know, is shockingly accurate. Okay, so. Oh, line it up properly, Chris. There we go. You shouldn't feel any sort of resistance, really. You don't want to cross-thread these because you'll have a swine getting them out and you could damage the case when you do it. All right. Please also bear in mind that when you work on a mister that um, it is pretty susceptible to static. Try and ground yourself as much as you can by touching something metal, like a radiator, in my ex which I'm touching off camera here, you can't see. Zap. Right. So, we've got the bottom plate on. Now, if you look at the rest of the case you'll see that we have two side plates, two end plates and a top plate. You can tell it's a top plate because it's got Mr written on it and you've got space for buttons and stuff. So we need to make sure we're putting the right bits on the right bits and now luckily these are labelled actually, uh, labelled with the name of the ports on it and this one it says user IO, it's got three USB ports on it as well. I don't know if you can actually read that because uh, it's pretty transparent but uh, all will become clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay, moving on. So, you have four receptacles in the bottom plate. You literally just drop this in and then it'll rest loosely there. Turn your mist around. Be careful. You don't want to undo all your hard work, so we'll just gently, 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 gently. Round we go, like that. This is probably best if, you, if it's facing you when you do this. It makes more sense. So again, look at the plate. Uh, you can tell if it's not the right way around because all of the words will look backwards and upside down. As you can see here, we have one that says SOG. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, on off, that's your power switch, secondary SD, audio in, primary SD, that sort of thing. And that goes on the other side. So oh, make sure there's no gunk on it. Line it up nicely. And that should fit just nicely, loosely there. Okay. End plates. Same again, they're labelled. You should know exactly what's what. This one has Ethernet, UART, USB and USB on the go on it. It has a little space for your, uh, it's got a little space for your little bridge board for your USB hub, which is lovely, so it doesn't stick out. And then you get the side panel and you literally just line it up nicely. You might have to pull the panels, the side panels out just a little bit to uh, give it some room. And then last but by no, no means least, we have the other end panel, which by, you'll know which one this is because you've done all the others, it's process of elimination. And then once you've done all that, those bits can now sit loosely together. So, we'll just throw the top on now. Oh no, don't do that yet, because we have some buttons. Now, if you've been following all of these videos, you'll see I've done a complete build. This it's the hardest bit of the entire build, I'm telling you. And it's not because I'm stupid. It's not, I'm telling you. It's because it's tricky. So what you need, you need to... <laughs> you, you, people seem unconvinced when I say stuff like that. So you need something sticky. So I've got a little bit of tape here that, was using, that we used to hold the cases in. Get your top plate and slot your buttons in, like so. All right. And use something sticky, like a blue tack, if you like. 
but in this case I'm just using a bit of scavenge tape and tape those buttons in place you will thank me later are they, in, are they held in place? sort of right okay. oh that one's not that's loose and then up oh. See, disaster strikes. So like I was saying, get some tape. Hold it in place. And then line up the rest of the case, like so. It'll just snot on you. Just make sure the top bits line up. Once you've done that, remove the tape. Look at that. Those buttons, and let's check, we'll do a click test. It's clicky, that's clicky, that's clicky. So now, final step, screw the top on. Again, learn how to use a screwdriver, and gently line everything up. Oh, there we go. There are other variations of this case available. This is the analog I.O. There is a digital version for the digital I.O. And there's also a blister version of the case. And they all work exactly the same way. Literally just line up your ports and then screw them in. The trickiest part was figuring out what to do with the risers, I'll be honest. <laughs> And then I remember you just bottom to top. That's the trick. It's like building a house. You don't start with the roof, do you? All right. Give it a bit of a squidge. And I'm going to say that looks lovely. So all we have to do now is plug it in and away we go.